Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Got a great show for you this evening. But before we start, I want to tell you quickly about one of our sponsors, Swiss America. Our country's facing so many problems these days under Joe Biden. The last thing any of us need is more to worry about. Unfortunately, now we have to fear losing our freedom and privacy with the Democrats' new push for a digital dollar that could allow the government to tell us what we can and cannot buy with our own hard-earned money. That's why I'm encouraging every one of you tuning into the show right now to get The Secret War on Cash, an insightful report created by my friends at Swiss America. With this report, you'll learn how to protect yourself from the threats facing our freedom and your hard-earned money. The report is available right now to my listeners free of charge. Just call 800-289-2646 or visit www.swissamerica.com slash Trump for your free report. Tonight, we are joined by host of the Officer Tatum Show. I don't know that you've ever been on with us. Brandon Tatum. Brandon, welcome to the show. We love it. And one of our faves, contributing editor, um, contributor at Turning Point, Aaron Elmore, could be a contributing editor. I don't know what you're doing these days, Aaron. Welcome to both of you. Um, 9-0, and oh, that is what the Supreme Court ruled um, this past week, unanimous ruling that states cannot disqualify Donald Trump from the ballot. We have seen how crazy, Brandon, people have gotten over Donald Trump. It's amazing because the very people who claim that they are the pinnacle of democracy, that mm -hmm. Donald Trump is anti-democracy, are actually trying to do the least democratic thing possible. States like Colorado, Maine, and Illinois have attempted or actually have removed Donald Trump from the ballot and the Supreme Court of the United States overturned it and said, you can't do this. It is up to the will of the people. That's who ultimately decides. Or Congress could disqualify somebody via the 14th Amendment, albeit this 14th Amendment, Brandon, they're trying to claim that Donald Trump incited an insurrection, which he was never charged with doing, which is outrageous and insane. Uh, what did you think of the 9-0 ruling? Were you surprised it was 9-0, Brandon? I actually was surprised that it was 9-0. Yeah, a it's little not, bit, right? It, it's not unreasonable to be 9-0, right? I mean, I think Stevie Wonder can see that there's no way in the world that these <laughs> particular states can just remove President Donald Trump from the ballot. And they claim that he was a part of an insurrection. They use another word I'm not going to say on your show because they oh. can't seem to figure out the word insurrection between the Oh, they keep messing. <laughs> it up. By the way, is that a Freudian slip? They keep saying something else that ends in erection. I won't right, say yeah, the right, beginning right, of it right. either. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how people conflate the two. Those are two different things. But somehow <laughs> they can't get it right. And, you know, I, I think that they're claiming that Donald Trump is interfering in elections and causing an insurrection. But that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying right. to create a civil war between the people and mm -hmm. they're trying to interfere in the election by not allowing a presidential candidate to be on the ballot because they don't like him. That's yep. simply what it is. Donald Trump deserves to be on the ballot. And, and another thing that I think is important is that they try to make this about Clarence Thomas. It was nine oh. to zero. This is not right. a one man show. It was liberals and conservatives that ruled It's them. amazing. Brandon, does it amaze you that the liberals immediately go for the black man on the Supreme <laughs> Court? Is that what what is that? What's that about? It's called racism. They hate black men. They and it's 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 not just racism of saying white to black. It's any of the Democrat leftists, they hate a black man that speaks the truth, that's conservative, and that's not bowing down to their theology. And that's what Clarence Thomas is. And they hate the fact that that black man has a white wife. The racism that they spew is asinine to me. And they yeah. like to often make the claim that this country is rooted in racism. I honestly believe that the Republican conservatives are far past racism. I think we look at people for the content of their character, what their merits are, and not the color of their skin. But the left exclusively, if you are a black man, you do not count in their victim Olympics. If you're mm -hmm. a black man and you're a conservative like Clarence Thomas and you're standing up for the truth, you believe in God, they literally hate you and they want you to be destroyed. Yeah. yeah, well, we know that the the left, the only way they operate is in identity politics, virtue signaling, emotion. It's never based in, in anything that's actually fact. 
at all or truth. Aaron, the 9-0, I, I really was surprised. And and it actually came across my phone and I was, you know, I alert on my phone. And I was actually talking to my mom at the time on the phone. I said, oh, they just ruled that they can't kick him off the ballot. And my mom said, how many people yeah. didn't like, what was it? I said it was unanimous. And she said, unanimous. I said it was nine and oh, that surprised a lot of people. But this is, is such a positive thing for the future of this country. And I actually loved when my father-in-law came out later that day and kind of talked about it. He, he made a speech there at Mar-a-Lago and he kind of gave you his thoughts on things. It wasn't about him. It's about the future of this country, because if they're allowed to just arbitrarily kick people off the ballot like this, who they don't like, who they don't want to see run for president, that it's not just a slippery slope. I mean, it's a downhill crash you're looking at. I love that he he talked about the fact that this isn't about him. It's bigger than him. It's about the future of this country. It's about future presidents and the America that that we all want to live in. This is an America that is ruled by we, the people. Um, give me your thoughts on things. I'm I'm happy to see it, but this will not be. It's not the first time, nor will it be the last time that these lunatics try to get Donald Trump kicked off a ballot or disqualify him from running for president. Or thrown in jail for absolutely nothing. Or, or seize yeah, his whatever. property. Or seize his yeah. property. And I, let's like, there's a whole litany of things we should talk about. First of all, you were talking about leftists and all they focus on emotion. Don't forget racism and name calling. That's what they do to us and call us names. Right. And I, as to the New York, New York decision, what's really troubling about that is the people that hate Donald Trump and have Trump derangement syndrome have to sit back and think if they've done this to him in a completely unfounded fashion, who's next? What's next for Letitia James? I think she went um, after like the biggest beef producer because of climate change. Just wait. Donald Trump opened yep. the floodgates and they're coming for you. And if you're voting liberal, they don't care. You could be next as well. But the thing about the nine and oh, I thought it was going to be either eight and one with Ketanji Brown Jackson being the dissent. But we got that nine and oh. Um, and what's really important about that is what happened in Colorado is they tried to basically make a criminal assertion or conviction outside of their jurisdiction. None of this happened in January 6th, even could smell Colorado. OK, so there are massive jurisdictional issues. There are also due process concerns. There was no trial. There was no judge. Right. There was no jury. There were no hearsay exceptions. You know, it's really, really crazy what they tried to do. And that's why I think the Supreme Court decision is so important. It says you people basically are out of your minds and you have absolutely mm -hmm. no right to make a judgment like this. Let's leave it to the people. And I think that that's why the CNN hosts, the MSNBC hosts, the legal pundits like Lawrence Tribe, who I learned all about in law school, who's a big anti-Trump leftist, they are having a catastrophic meltdown right now. And they don't know what to say. So they go like this and go after Clarence Thomas. And it's like, what are you actually saying and doing? This was not liberal versus conservative. This was everybody. And they left it all on the paint, nine and zero. So I think that sends a very yeah. clear message to people behind the scenes at CNN that are probably saying, we have to change our narrative a little bit. Yeah, well, and I mean, I think it shows the truth that they're terrified that people in this country are going to vote for Donald Trump because they are, because yeah. people have seen what three years of Democrat rule will get you. We are far worse off now as a country. We are far less safe as a country. People have less money in their pockets right now. They know it too. And they're like, oh my God, people are going to go vote for Donald Trump. Hell yeah, they're going to go vote for Donald Trump. People who never considered voting for Donald Trump, Brandon, I think are going to come out and vote for him. So what did they do? They try A state tried to disqualify a federal candidate, which they said, you can't do that. We're drawing the line here. Um, and it's amazing because obviously this is a tactic to dissuade people from either voting for him or obviously they're trying to kick him off the ballot altogether. What was really incredible to me is that um, you had a column written in the Daily Beast calling out one of the most dangerous uh, geodemographic groups in America, white rural Trump supporters, Brandon. They say most of the, st the negative stereotypes liberals hold about rural Americans are actually true. Most likely group to uh, distrust the government. Most of these people, they say, are uh, close to a majority believe Donald Trump won the 2020 election. Oh, because he did? Okay, go ahead. They believe Donald Trump should be back in office. Absolutely correct. And these people, they say, believe that he should be back in office by force 
if necessary, and it's a group likely to take up arms if needed. Yeah, you mean people out in rural America? These are the people who believe in the Second Amendment because it's there as number two for a reason. It's so that our government doesn't get too full of themselves and start controlling we the people. Um, the fact that they're going after white uh, rural Trump supporters, is that surprising at all to you, Brandon? Because this is, it seems like they just go in a circle over and over again. And now here we are, we're racist because we like Donald Trump again. They're back to this. Yeah, Laura, this, these people are absolutely nutty and out of control and they are in terror because when yeah. Donald Trump gets elected, he's going to come after them. They have been abusive towards us for four years now, or it's about to be four years, and they know that it's, it's the payback is coming, and they are terrified about it. And I think that the Supreme Court was not in a zero because the, the liberals know if they were to actually remove someone from the ballot, the Republicans, when they get into power, they can start removing the Democrat mm -hmm. candidates from the well, ballot right. as well. And so they know to a certain degree that they have to be strategic. But listen, they want to soften up the the crazy minds of leftists to to, I would say, justify and normalize the hatred of a sector of people in this country that love America. They want to divide. It's almost like what Hitler did to the Jews. Like they want to create a propaganda. So when they do things that are unconstitutional to a group of people that everybody's is, is now normalized because yeah. these people are evil. They hate America. They hate freedom. They want to use force against you. They they are they are setting up the tempo to make these people look crazy, but I think it's not. I mean, in my opinion, it's not going to work because all of the things that they put out there are superfluous when it comes to whether or not you can put food on the table, right. whether or not your four hundred one k. Nobody care. I mean, you can say Trump, Donald Trump says this, Donald Trump did this, Donald Trump is indicted. Man, that means nothing compared right. to. Can I feed my children? Am I going to have enough money for groceries? Do I have jobs and opportunities? Is taxes going out of control in the state that I live in? Is crime running rampant? Am I going to get robbed today? Mm -hmm. Those things are actually what's more important to the people. And this is what they miss. And I'm glad they're missing it. This is what they miss in 2016. Yeah, they think that right. all of this other crazy stuff is what people worry about. And they really want a better country. And I think that's across the board, most people generally want America to move in the right direction. And Donald Trump is the only one that's offering that to any extent. Yeah, I also think a lot about when Joe Biden goes on television and says, this is the best economy we've ever had in this country. Oh my people, God, what? I just wonder who's advising that? Is it that if you say it enough to the American people that we're stupid enough to believe it, even though we see that some people, and they also talk about our wages, wages are going up. No, because all of the other costs are rising too. Your mm -hmm. actual wage is going down. The American people at home right. are saying, I can't put gas in my car. I have less money than I did two years ago. I'm worried about fentanyl in all 50 states. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about this open border and the safety for my children, like that poor young girl that was brutally murdered while jogging, and she was supposed to be a nurse. Think of all the lives she could have saved, and her life was cut short by an illegal alien. Yes, I said it, an illegal alien. But these people like Joe Biden go on TV and say, the border is closed, and this is the best economy we've ever had. And everyone at home must be sitting there saying, this guy's absolutely bananas because that's not well, what I'm it, seeing or feeling. And it's a lie. I think that's that's what's important here. They're happy to lie right to your face. They don't care if you know that it's a lie. They're doing it anyway. They're just lying to you. And Brandon, I think what you brought up is so important. I was looking at some of the comments on this and somebody said, we're too busy trying to keep our kids from taking opioids laced with fentanyl bought from an illegal who moved into a house that was owned by a poor family who couldn't pay their taxes. Get over your elitist BS. Yeah, people are worried about day-to-day -day life. This kind of craziness, trying to divide us, trying to make it all about race, and these people are xenophobic and anti-gay. And it, No, people want a better life for their families, and that's what this election is going to come down to. Brandon, you said it too. It is very reminiscent of 2016. Mm -hmm. People want change. Who is the change maker? It's Donald Trump. And the great news right now is we know what he'll do when he gets in there. We know he'll keep his promises. We know how he operates as president of the United States. Isn't it amazing? They always said this was the guy who was going to bring us World War III, yet he got us out of war wars and actually had peace agreements signed in the Middle East. People said it would never happen. Donald Trump did it.
I think people are tired of this phoniness and all of the division that is constantly out there. Um, we gotta, we gotta get this country back on track. And I think ultimately that's what people care about. Um, obviously we're here. It's super Tuesday. The number one issue, Brandon has been consistently for Republicans in these primaries, the Southern border, illegal immigration. It is such a big problem because they try to sell it as, oh, this is the, this is the kind thing to do. If you care about people, they always go for the emotion, the Democrats, don't they? If you care about people, we're going to, we're going to let these people in, grant them amnesty. They, you know, these people are trying to escape bad situations. No, these people are taking advantage of the fact you're not enforcing the law at the Southern border. And it's not a border issue. It's an every state issue. Just ask Eric Adams, mayor of New York City, he is finally calling for the end of sanctuary cities because, man, New York City has been inundated. Close to 200,000 illegal immigrants have arrived in the past year and a half. So he's had a bit of a change of heart. All of these sanctuary cities, of course, that forbids city officials from even asking questions about somebody's immigration status or talking to the federal authorities like ICE about people who are illegally in the United States. He said he had to change a heart. He said, we need to modify the sanctuary city law that if you commit a felony or violent act, we should be able to turn you over to ICE and have you deported. Yeah, what took him so long, Brandon? Well, this is what happens when your virtue signal uh, goes too far and you write a yeah. check you can't cash. These people never thought that that governors in Texas and Florida and other people around the country would ship them to these sanctuary cities and sanctuary states. The, the whole yeah. purpose of being a sanctuary state is you're saying that regardless of what the federal law says, you can have sanctuary in our city. They thought that it would never happen. They boasted it. They virtue signaled to the public. Look, look how loving and giving we are. And when the rubber hit the road, reality struck. And these people are not all coming here for a better opportunity. It's like a person being hungry and they drive right past McDonald's to go to a steakhouse. It's like, well, no, you could stop in this country that you're in if you really just need some resources. You guys want to come to the Mecca of all countries. It doesn't work like that. And, and, and I'll, say, I'll say this, too. I wanted to add that low information voters is what Democrats are targeting. That's why they get on TV and say the stupidest stuff you've ever heard in your life with no evidence, no backing. It's, it's redundant. It's it's, it's, it's lunacy but they say it because there are people out here that are not like us because we focus on the news we watch it we pay attention to it this is our in, in many ways this is our livelihood to, to mm -hmm. be informed most people are not informed most people are not paying attention you go out into the street and you ask a person simple questions they're going to give you a talking point oh the, tr the biden economy is doing great well give me an example oh. they have none and so this is what their focus is to say let's put this out there for the low information voters trump is bad He's a racist, so you can never vote for a racist. The economy is good. Joe Biden is, is bringing normalcy back to America. We, we're doing the right thing by letting these illegals in here. All of them are good, law-abiding citizens just looking for opportunity. And these mindless Americans, which I, I feel bad for them, they don't think or process or do any research, and they just go to the ballot and they vote on these ridiculous principles. But the reality is we should not be allowing people to come into this country that we cannot vet and that we're not prepared to take care of. And with wars going on in foreign countries, what make us think that they're not sending terrorists right through the southern border, of sending course. fentanyl, all of those yeah. things are applicable. Yeah. And of you know what else are. is funny is on that note, when you talk about Adams and like these liberal cities, they've often been touting lately, and you see the liberal talking heads doing this as well, saying crime is down in big cities. No, let me walk you through what has actually happened. They have liberal George Soros district attorneys who are not enforcing the laws on the books. Yep. So they are not prosecuting crime. So it's so showing as if there is less crime when there is actually staggering amounts of dangerous crime in these big cities that just aren't being prosecuted. And that's right. the and you have, part. By the way, oh. you have less cops on the street in New York City because due to the illegal immigrants coming in, I mean, it's costing like $12 billion over three years to the city of New York. They had to slash the NYPD um, officers by a fifth. They had to get rid of a, a fifth of their officers. At a time when you have crime through the roof, you're getting rid of cops on the street. 
Wow. That, I mean, the dumbest thing possible. Go ahead, Brandon. I interrupted you. No, no Laura, you, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. That's exactly oh, yeah. what I was going to say. Policing, like, they're crazy. The thing is that there's police officers are not enforcing anything. They're not even there being proactive. They're not making arrests. And they're well, and using why would they want to? They why can't. would they want to? They're going to get punished right. if they actually do their jobs. Yes. It is so backwards. The way we have set things up in this country, I'm so grateful for every person out there who serves, whether you are law enforcement, whether you are military. I have both in my family. And it is very scary for the families of those individuals who go out maybe on a daily basis. If you're a cop, if you're a, a first responder, you don't know what's going to happen in a day. If you're going overseas for months on end serving this country. But we have set things up in such a way where cops are afraid to do their job, right, Brandon? They, You don't know what's going to happen to you. You could actually find yourself in the hot seat for actually doing your job and locking up bad guys these days. I, I tell you what, Laura, I couldn't I couldn't do it in this day and age. I was a yeah. police officer for several years and now I, I would not want to risk my freedom because I would go out, put my life on the line, potentially lose my life, get injured to make an arrest, trying to protect the public. And then I go to prison. That's insane to me. Or, or, or even what well, not worse than prison, but the second worst thing is to be humiliated so much to be doxxed. I have to move right. my family. I'm getting death threats. I know officers that call me, they contact me, they email me about the lunacy that's going on around the country. Now, I love states like Florida, Texas and other states. They take care of their police officers. They love them. They appreciate them. Mm -hmm. They fund them. They give them, you know, a, a level of immunity in case something goes wrong. Those things are applicable and appropriate for policing. But they are literally lying to us about our stats, even back to where we were talking about at the beginning of the show or early in the show about how they're categorizing rural people. How are they coming up with these ideologies? They said, in and in I was watching the show, uh, the little interview that they did, they were saying that um, the rural folks do not want to abide by the First Amendment. They don't believe in free speech. They <laughs> want a president to have 100 percent immunity. It's like what they're doing is they're deriving their own theology from answers mm -hmm. that these people are giving them. If you say, hey, I don't think the election was handled properly, they're election deniers. When Hillary right. Clinton and the Democrats denied Trump as being the adequate, pre not adequate president, but the legitimate president for three years, they did an right. investigation. Hillary still says that he got the presidency because of interference from Russia. Yeah. I mean, oh my God. these people are just, it's asinine to me, but I'm hoping that people watch this show and listen to us online or wherever they can to get some real doggone information and not be listening to fools on television. Yeah. Uh, nobody move. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to talk about the Trump and Biden border visit on the other side. Don't move. Sorry to interrupt the show, but if you know anything about me, you know that I take my health very seriously. One of the ways I stay healthy is because I take Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies in a capsule. They have an amazing story of how this product was developed by Dr. Douglas Howard, and you can read about it all yourself on their website. Balance of Nature receives over a thousand success stories every single month. They have hundreds of thousands of customers who've purchased billions of capsules of their fruits and veggies over the past 20 years. You can check it all out on their website. Their products are gluten-free and non-GMO, and they contain no added sugars or synthetics. If you're looking for something to make you feel better naturally, you should definitely give Balance of Nature a try. In fact, you can order today. And whether you order online or call them direct, you can use the promo code LARA to get this special offer of 35% off, plus $10 off any additional sets, plus free shipping and their money-back guarantee. Call them at 800-246-8751 and use discount code Lara or order online at balanceofnature.com and use discount code LARA to get 35% off. Mike Lindell and MyPillow employees want to say thank you to my listeners for all of your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TRUMP and you get free shipping on your entire order. Take advantage of this sale and get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0 or the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last for long. You can also get six pack towel sets for only $29.98. Take advantage of the free shipping on larger items like mattresses and mattress toppers 
all of this 100% made in the USA and on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TRUMP or call 800-624-3945 and get free shipping on your entire order while supplies last. Uh, Aaron, we're talking about illegal immigration. Obviously, most of that is coming through our southern border. It's amazing because Kamala Harris has been the border czar now for three years. And uh, this is a, a border czar who doesn't make any trips down to the southern border. Incredible. Turns out now Joe Biden wants to get involved down at the southern border. We saw last week Donald Trump, of course, leading candidate for the Republican side, the presumptive Republican nominee, went down to the southern border, something that's been sort of a, a pinnacle of his entire political career, talking about yeah. securing our border. That's not a surprise. I was surprised to see old Joe make his way down there. What do you think that was all about? P. Are. And by the way, when you <laughs> juxtapose the two situations with Trump and Biden at the border, Biden obviously looks confused. He's barely walking around. He's oh. in like the club med of the border, right? He's not in like Eagle Pass down in the trenches. President Trump went up to the border and he's like waving to the people on their side. It was so savage. It was so savage. Joe Biden probably didn't even know where he was. He probably thought he was at like a, a, a Disney hard. ride about the border. Yeah. But this is just all about optics because even the liberal media has been saying to him, when are you going to go to the border? When are you going to go to the border? When you, and then so he's like, I went to the border. That's all this is, is smoke and mirrors and public relations. And we know in almost all 50 states, if not all 50 states, the biggest issue is the border. So right. he now has to spin this around, make it look like he cares, make it look like this is not his fault because he always blames the Republicans in the House. He said the House has the ability to make laws. We already have border laws yeah, on the books. Be very easy. Be very he's easy to do them. it. And my is, are people just, are people going to buy this though? Is the real question like is is Joe Biden just kind of making a, a casual trip down to you know the border, kind of to the border? Is that is that enough for people? Is that going to do it? And people are like, oh, this guy's going to take it seriously now because I don't think so. I don't think so. It's hard because I only assimilate with conservatives and I don't really know any liberals anymore. So my <laughs> ear isn't really to the ground on this one. But I do think that people left, right, and center are realizing that this is a massive problem of epic. Of epic proportions and just because he shows up takes a few pictures you know kisses some babies and shakes some hands isn't stopping anything that's happening yeah it's amazing what's interesting to me too is it's incredible brandon if you go back to donald trump's initial speech announcing he was running for president and he called out the southern border and he called out the issues there and he talked about how it was so important that we have a secure border and build the wall and all of it and he got absolutely slammed for it. That was the, the thing that they tried to take him down, number one on the, the border. And it's amazing because you often see this with things that my father-in-law talks about. People are finally realizing, oh my God, Donald Trump was right. This is a huge problem. I, I just have to think, and I kind of feel it right now. I don't know what you're feeling out there, but People are tired of the crap. People are tired of, of being afraid to say they uh, are supporting Donald Trump. I think there's a huge shift in people who are like, wait a minute, I got played by the media. I actually believed what these people were saying. They're not, they're not doing it anymore. These people are awake. And once you're awake, you're not going back to sleep. They see things as they are. I feel that there has been a big shift and people who are going to vote for Donald Trump, he got more votes, we know, in 2020 than 2016 by 11 million. I think it's going to be an even, even bigger year this year for Donald Trump. What do you think? Laura, I, and I know that we um, get frustrated and upset about this old man in the office who stumbles mm -hmm. himself around everywhere. He don't know where he's at. And yeah. I know it's frustrating, but I, I want to give some hope to the people that I think and, and, and maybe I'll be proven right. I think that Biden winning the election or allegedly winning the election was one of the greatest things that happened to America. And here's why. We okay. had an opportunity with a great president and he did a lot of phenomenal things. He made references to things that we know to be true now. And they were they hated him. They were mad at him. And then when Biden got in, the veil came off. Now mm -hmm. we realize they have nothing to offer America. 
all they do is virtue signal. They pointed the finger at that man and said, he's wrong, he's evil, he's racist. And now we see that they were wrong, they're evil, and they're racist. And this is like a reckoning between America. All people, everybody in my family, and I, I, I get on them every time we go, we have a dinner, like we, uh, we did something for a holiday in Texas with my family. And I'm like, y'all going to vote for him again? And not one person says they're going to vote for Joe Biden. They, everybody can Love see. It. And I'm going to tell you what they did to us, Laura. They, they lured us into believing with all of the hatred, hate, hateful rhetoric against Trump. They lured us into believing that if Biden got in office, things will be normal again. Right. There's, there, there wouldn't be all this stuff on the news and investigations and impeachment. Yeah, he's like an old grandfatherly figure. Right. This is an old Scranton Joe, this old nice guy. Don't worry about him. Yeah. And, and they were wrong. And, and I'm hoping that the smart, intelligent people who love America outpace the people who are low information voters. I'm telling you, like the reason why Biden can go to the border and stumble around is because a, there's a there's a demographic of people who won't look at what he's doing. They won't look at what right. he's actually accomplishing. It's just like the student loan forgiveness. He, huh. he forgave student loans. For, and I looked it up and I'm like, do you know how ridiculous this is? You have to have twelve thousand dollars of debt or less. And you have to have been paying on it for 10 years. If you were paying, if you were paying twelve thousand dollars of debt back to the government for 10 years, they are screwing you. You probably paid that five times already. So what forgiveness actually happened when it comes to student loan debt? That and, and you we all know. I, I don't know if you guys went to college and had to pay for it, but twelve thousand dollars isn't a semester. I mean, you, you yeah. didn't get any level of education with that amount of money. So it, yeah. it just goes to show that they throw the stuff out there, but it's up to us to, to reveal the truth to people. And hopefully we outpace them when it comes to voting. We yeah. have to. I mean, that's why I talk all the time about how we as uh, Republicans are going to have to start looking at elections differently. It would be great if we had one day of voting. It would be great if we had paper ballots. It would be great if everywhere uh, required voter ID we don't have that right now. We could get back there, but it will require Donald Trump in the White House. It'll require a, a bigger majority in the House and a majority in the Senate for us to actually see that day come and our federal elections be one day and, and that's how we're going to do it. We don't have it now. So right now, we need to make sure that if your state starts voting on X day, go vote that day. If you're going to mail it in, mail it in. However you can vote, Vote, and then you use your time from the day early voting starts in your state all the way up until November 5th, the last day of voting and election day officially in this country, to get every person you know out to vote. We've got to have votes banked as we go into election day, because if we wait till election day, because I get it, everybody loves to wait till election day to go out, you get your sticker, you do your selfie, you post it online, I get that it's great. We can't do that anymore. The second you can go vote, Go do it and take people with you every step of the way. Uh, that's how we're going to win on Election Day. That's how we're going to win in a landslide on November 5th. Before we go today, there are two more stories I want to talk about. We talked last week about Google's Gemini AI. So artificial intelligence, Aaron, scares the hell out of me. I just, mm -hmm. I've been very anti-AI for a long time. Eric like thinks chat GPT is funny to use for stuff. It <laughs> scares me. So last week we talked about the fact that whenever you ask this Google Gemini to produce images of uh, like 1943 German soldiers, they give you like a photo of a black Nazi, which we know didn't exist. A female Nazi soldier also didn't exist. Like these things are so ridiculous and they are so uh, it, like DEI with all of it. Now... They asked this thing to identify what is worse, a pandemic unleashed on the world or dead naming a trans person. I had to look up, by the way, what the hell dead, dead name. naming was. I didn't even know what this was. Apparently, this is when you use the person who uh, considers themselves a different gender. You use their name from a, an original gender. There are some online who like to label me as a trans person. It's a funny <laughs> thing they like to do out there. They call me Larry sometimes. That's okay. Y'all go ahead with that. If I had transitioned to Larry and you still call me Lara, that's dead naming. This bot replied, dead naming a transgender person is an act of disrespect and can cause distress. It is harmful. And it said that it refused to participate to say whether that was worse or unleashing a deadly pandemic on the world, Aaron. It also said that apparently women could have penises, 
casual. We know that it, it loves to, to do all this crazy stuff. And um, it avoided using, let me see. Yeah, it says that, that all of this crazy stuff is acceptable. But this is why I don't like AI, because we know that human beings actually program it. And we know the leanings of the person who said that dead naming a trans person is worse or as bad as unleashing a deadly virus on the world. Well, the problem is, is if young people that are using this for school projects or people that don't yeah. know exactly what's going on, as Brendan referred to as, you know, low information, if they're using this thinking it's gospel, this is a robot, it knows better than I do. No, this is propaganda. That's why Elon Musk developed Grok. So if you're on X, he's got his own in there. So that's the one I use sometimes now if I need to say something quippy. But it's really scary. Kids are using this for their school projects and they're starting to think this is normal. And if you combine this with what TikTok, the Chinese Communist Party spying tool, is doing to our children, they're thinking that trans is cool and using they, them, whatever pronouns is acceptable. It's sort of like this brainwashing from every single angle and every single element and it's making us normalize this behavior when we're all sitting here saying, wait a minute, George Washington was not black and there were no black Nazi soldiers. That doesn't even make sense if you understand what Adolf Hitler stood for. So it's just a really scary time that we have to discern. And by the way, never use Google. I always use another search engine. I, I'm not promoting it. I don't work for them. I don't get paid for them. But I use DuckDuckGo. You told Google me that a long time ago, Aaron, and I started using that because, yeah, I don't, I don't trust list. any of it. It's yeah. useless. So at least with DuckDuckGo, you're getting better information. I even downloaded the little app on my phone and I have it on my home screen if I have to look something up. Because if you look up anything on Google, it'll be like Hunter Biden is a great attorney with uh, international accolades. You know what I'm saying? Like it tells you absolutely. Don't garbage. look me up way, on there because it'll it'll tell you that I'm like some sort of a, a puppy killer or something. I'm sure it's like yeah, it's, these people but are you know, crazy. Google stock, Google stock like plummeted after the disaster with all of this AI. Yeah, right. well, it, rightly so. Brandon, what do you think? Are you into AI? Because uh, it really scares me. Yeah, I think it's a very scary tool. We we utilize AI and we want to take advantage of it on the front end because we cannot get left behind by these liberal nut jobs. So I think it's in, it's intuitive and it's uh, advantageous for conservatives to be involved in AI, to write code and to own these companies. So therefore, we can have our messaging out there and we can make sure we set the record straight. We need alternatives to the things that they're doing. Now, the, the bad thing for us to do if we were to, to make a tactical decision is to back out of it and not be involved because they're not going to stop. I mean, you, uh, the egregious this nature. This is the future, unfortunately, right? yeah. It's, it's egregious for them to say, that, like the guy at search, American women. There's not one person that wasn't black. And, and I get it. I think it was Black History Month or whatever they call it. But it, it, they're, they're so egregious with it. And, and the yeah. reason why they're doing that is because they go to the extreme. So then when they level out at a lie, people begin to accept it. But we have to do kind of what we said about voting. We have to interject mm -hmm. ourselves into the situation. We have to be more involved. We have to outpace them. They cannot be more tactical than we are going to be. We have to do it. We have the money. Conservatives, capitalists, we have the money to do it. We just can't shy away from it. And it's the same thing with TikTok. I know TikTok is, is a you know, a communist tool for the, for the yeah, Chinese, Chinese regime. Chinese are spying on, spying on us, totally. And I would say this, though. If we as conservatives, and I, I have a TikTok channel, I want nothing to do with TikTok, but we have to have a voice we on there. We have to reach out on there. You're exactly the, right. The young people are just getting inundated with stupidity. When I scroll through the little feed on there, I mean, it's the stupidest stuff you've ever heard. People are just yeah. completely pushing propaganda. So as conservatives, as people who know the truth, we have to infiltrate every aspect of society, even politics, so that we can have a, a, a country that's fair. Have you seen what little girls look like now walking around their houses because they're so into TikTok dances? They're always like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, no. well, but by no. the way, you know what I noticed? And Brandon, you're exactly right. I feel like the, the the Democrats and folks on the left know how powerful a tool TikTok really is. That's where uh, the, the young voters in this country, 18 to 35 or 34 year olds rather, are getting the, the vast majority of their information. I'm not even joking. I wish I was joking about this. It's from TikTok. And what I have noticed is that when I watch TV, uh, gosh, if it's like six times an hour, I have the TV on in the background, I hear an ad now for TikTok 
all the time. And I'm like, this is interesting. Here we are in a huge election year. What I would argue is probably the most important election of any of our lifetimes yep. happening this year on November 5th. And what is it that they're pushing out there? What did they obviously sunk a lot of money into? TikTok advertising. Why are you advertising so much for TikTok? It can only be because they know that that's a way to reach out to the, the young voters who, by the way, Joe Biden is losing right now to Donald Trump. Love to see it. But they know that that's how they reel people back in. That's how they dumb people down. That's how China can spy on us via TikTok. But we can't we can't just say, like, we're not going to do it. We got to fight fire with fire. We got to get on there, too. And we have to be doing the same stuff. Um, really quickly, last thing before we go, the state of Oregon um, you know, they they had this thing in 2020. They decided in 2020 to put a ballot measure out and say, do, do the folks in Oregon want to decriminalize personal use amounts of drugs, of any drugs? If it's a personal use amount, then they're not going to lock you up for it, no matter what it is. Like, you're go, go crazy on it. Heroin, methamphetamines, knock yourself out. Oregon is experiencing one of the largest spikes of overdose dose deaths in the nation after that ballot measure passed. So the obviously it decriminalized this. Um, and the people have said, wait a minute, maybe we made a mistake because things are just out of control there. Imagine the disaster that would ensue if you just said like any kind of like small drug use, even if it's something that's really dangerous, go ahead for it. Uh, now they have recriminalized it. They just passed a bill to recriminalize possession of small amounts of drugs such as heroin, methamphetamines, uh, and they're making it a misdemeanor push punishable by up to six months in jail. And it enables the police to confiscate the drugs and crack down on open air drug use, which Brandon, we know is a huge problem. Here's another one, just like the sanctuary city stuff that you're like, yeah, Duh, of course that was going to be a problem. At least they are kind of getting it together and wising up to it out there in Oregon, I guess. Well, I don't think they're doing enough, and I think it's a little too late. When you have a Probably. situation where you have to reverse some theology that you put out there and present it to the world, it's almost impossible because people are so addicted to these drugs and it's so prevalent and people are trying them for the first time and they would have never tried meth or heroin in that way. I, I think it's incredibly irresponsible for leadership to do these type of things. They're so inconsistent and hypocritical in their application of law. The reason right. why these things are against the law because they hurt people. That's like saying um, that, you know, a person having an inappropriate relationship with children should be legal because people are doing it anyway. We should decriminalize it. No, you should never decriminalize it. Just because people do it right. don't mean it should be legal. We should always have strict measures on morality and safety concerns because you are utilizing. I remember when I was a cop, we spent 90 percent of our time dealing with people who don't pay taxes and who are irresponsible people in society. The people who are paying taxes for our services, they had to wait. We had to deal with these idiots all day long, the majority of the people. And this is the resources that get accumulated when it comes to places like Oregon. If you leave it up to them to let all this stuff be legal, you are going to burden the criminal system. You are going to burden the police response because although they're not getting arrested, you still have to respond for these people committing crimes and you still got to respond to them ODing. So yeah. it's it's still going to cause a lot of, you know, turmoil for a city when you make things like that, it, you know, things like that legal. But uh, I don't know how a, a grown, responsible person could come to that conclusion that it makes any sense. It just doesn't. And now they're feeling the effects of it. It's so sad, Aaron, because some of the, the most beautiful parts of our country, like California and Oregon, I would argue, I mean, really just magnificent areas of America. They just have utterly destroyed these states with just dumb stuff like this. California. I was just thinking the same. Oregon is yeah. just absolutely stunning. I had a friend in town a few weeks ago from Denver, which was such a beautiful city. And now because of the liberal leaders there, homelessness, crime, it's sort of like they don't understand cause and effect. Mm. And it's, again, back to the virtue signaling. We care about people. Let them have their freedom, personal choice. And what happens? Cause, effect, more overdose deaths. And now they're having to say, whoops, we were wrong. And how are you going to help these people? Basically, there are no services for these people any longer who need treatment. And by the way, prison is a good place, 
for people with mental health issues, oftentimes, and with drug addiction, because they're offering you counseling. So you get counseling while you're inside of there to get yourself clean, mental health capabilities to get yourself on medications. Now they say, go back to the street, and it's this vicious cycle of abuse that these liberals think they're helping, but they're actually hurting far more. Yeah, I just, like, it's stuff like this I hear, it and I'm like, yeah, you think that's a problem? But I hope these things are a catalyst for people to do a little more research and get a little more information. And once you start doing that, then you kind of are like, wait a minute, have I been lied to about all this stuff? Yeah, you probably have. Wake up, join the party. You can come on in. You can be a Trump voter at any time. We would love to have you and we'd love to have you with us to save America, which is what we're going to do this year. So Brandon and Aaron, thank you both for joining us here at The Right View. To everybody at home, as always, thank you for joining us. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. And we'll see you back here next time for more. And I won't back down. Nothing is worse than being on a phone call that drops. Nothing is worse than trying to text someone and you can't reach them because your phone is out of service range. And nothing is worse than supporting these major corporations and companies who don't support us. That is why I love Patriot Mobile. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless network. They use every cell tower out there available to all networks so that they have the greatest 4G and 5G coverage nationwide, and they support the causes that are important to us as conservatives. If you go today to patriotmobile.com slash Laura Trump and use the promo code Trump, you will get free activation today. Again, that is patriotmobile.com slash Lara Trump. The promo code is Trump for free activation so that you can get a great cell plan and feel good about doing it.